itself is a huge khayr that Allah has given him. This is part of Al Kawthar. Part of Al Kawthar is his mercy. We haven't sent you at all with any purpose except as a mercy for all the peoples and all the nations of the world. And this has also in our times become a controversy. Your religion preaches violence. Your religion tells you to you know, kill innocents. Your religion is a religion of hate. You know, I listen to a lot of Christian talk radio. That's what they talk about. Islam's a religion of hate. This guy, Muhammad, they don't say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by the way. You know, he commanded people to kill. He commanded people to, you know, torture. And that's what they're talking about. This, you've seen this on the news. We're tired of watching this stuff, right? But we do have to understand the Quran does talk about violence. When they, they can quote ayat because they're there, right? They are there. So how do we understand them? How do we understand them? Probably the most controversial ayah according to their standards and the ayah we're at least comfortable discussing, the surahs we're at least comfortable discussing uh, are places like Surah At-Tawbah. Surah At-Tawbah. Surah At-Tawbah is very uncompromising and very unforgiving. It's very unforgiving. It's so, it's so vicious in its antagonism against the kuffar, it doesn't even begin with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It doesn't even mention Allah's mercy. It doesn't begin like that. And when Umar radiallahu anhu was asked, actually Ali was asked, why doesn't it begin with Bismillah? He said because it came down with a sword out of its cover. You know the mane of the sword, the cover? This surah came down with the sword out of its cover. <laughs> That's how he responded. That's a pretty, pretty stern surah. It's a very uncompromising, you could even argue politically incorrect surah. But you know what's amazing about that surah? Allah didn't begin with His mercy, but He ended with the Messenger's mercy. بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ Subhanallah. قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ Subhanallah. حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah did not begin with His mercy, but at the end, whose mercy does He mention? The mercy of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa How do we understand that? Why would Allah mention the mercy of His Messenger in a surah that seems to have no mercy at all? Even from the beginning, the kuffar have four months before they're executed. فَسِيحُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ أَرْبَعَةَ أَشْهُرٍ Right? And then after that, you know, بَرَاءَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ It begins that way. Allah's announcement of not having anything to do with the mushrikeen, nor His Messenger. They have nothing to do with them and that they are going to be humiliated and put down on the earth, and they're not going to be able to overpower their enemies, I mean the kuffar are being told, it's not your time anymore. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ غَيْرُ مُعْجِزِ اللَّهِ You're not going to be able to overpower Allah anymore, your time is done. It's very uncompromising ayat. Then what does that have to do with mercy? How do we explain that to a Christian friend or a Jewish friend? How do we explain these ayat? I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this because it's part of what we have to appreciate about these ayat. We should study these ayat and what the scholars have said about them, but also we should appreciate the things that are being said in our time and how to respond to them and how to you know, understand the response to them for ourselves and also for the benefit of others. You see, Allah had sent messengers throughout history. And we know that and the Christians know that, everybody else knows that too. The people of the book know that. That Allah sent messengers. And then the messengers came and did the majority follow them or did not follow them? The majority did not follow them. And when the majority did not follow them, and the, the majority decided that they're going to remain kuffar, they're going to remain disbelievers, then Allah Azza wa Jal sent punishment upon them, not just in hellfire, but where else? This world also. Allah destroyed them by a flood or an earthquake or fire from the sky or the town is turned upside down. There are all kinds of horrific punishments. And what's the crime? The crime isn't kufr. The crime is specifically kufr against a messenger in his face. You living in the time of a messenger? It's not that you just heard about him. You met him. You saw him, he was your neighbor. And you were still disbelievers? And you remained that way for decade after decade after decade? In the case of Nuh for centuries? How dare you? Not only will you get punishment in hellfire, you will also get destroyed. Here, you understand that? The crime is to disbelieve in a messenger in his presence. That's the crime. And over and over and over again, Allah destroys the nation that disbelieves in the messenger in his face. In, in his presence. This is the sunnah of Allah. This is the sunnah of Allah. This is how Allah does things. And Allah says, وَلَن تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَبْدِيلًا You will not find a change in the way Allah does things. Now will the Christians agree that God destroys nations or destroyed nations that disbelieved? Absolutely. Because their Bible is full of it too. It's filled with what we have in our book too. They have it. Now, let's take the next step. We believe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a messenger. Just like Nuh is a messenger. Just like Salih is a messenger. Agreed? Right? Now, these messengers came 
they're warning the people, if you don't believe, a punishment is coming. إِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ I'm afraid for you of punishment of an enormous day. I'm afraid for you, I'm afraid for you. Did the people take those warnings seriously? No. Come on, we've been hearing your warnings all year, all 10 years now, bring it already. Where, when is it coming? وَيَقُولُنَا مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعَدِ When is this promise going to be fulfilled? We've been hearing you talk about this, we're tired of it now. You know what, just bring it. If you've got it, bring it. Well, we can handle it. That's how they started talking to the messengers. Then the punishment came. And when the punishment came, it's not like Allah gave them a chance. Hey, you see it now, you ready to believe? In other words, the floodwaters came, and they're about to crush the kafir's house, and then Allah hit the pause button. And then Nuh comes over and says, Didn't I tell you? You want to believe now? Were they given that opportunity? Once the floodwaters reach here, they're not going to stop, they're going to keep going. You understand? In other words, the opportunity to believe is not before Allah overpowers them. The opportunity to believe is... Not after it, but before it. That's what I'm saying. You can only believe before Allah brings the punishment, not after. Now come to the Messenger wasallam. This is the Sunnah of Allah. Once the punishment comes, it cannot be stopped. Who's the criminal? The Quraishar. They disbelieved in a Messenger in his face. What did they deserve according to the Sunnah of Allah? That they should be annihilated. Maybe, a fire, maybe fire from the sky or earthquake or the earth should eat them or they should be flooded. Something should happen to them because this happens to every messenger's disbelievers. Fine. But Allah did not bring them punishment from the sky. He did not bring them punishment from underneath the earth. He did not afflict them with disease. What punishment were they given? They were, the punishment against them, divine wrath against them were the Sahaba. The Sahaba. Allah sent upon them the believers who, who, who uh, defeated them in battle and eventually conquered Mecca. Now when they conquered Mecca, now Allah has overpowered them. And when Allah overpowers the disbeliever, what's supposed to happen? What happens in the case of Nuh or of Salih or of Shu'aib? When Allah overpowers the disbeliever, what's supposed to happen? You die. So the, the sword of the Sahaba, the believers is on their necks. And then Allah says, stop. Has he ever said stop before? No? He says stop. Give them four months. Let them think about it. And in the meantime, if anybody comes to you and says, I, actually, I never took you seriously. All these 23 years, I, I don't know, I was hanging out, I was, you know, I was busy with my PlayStation 3, you know. I didn't really hear the message. So can you explain it to me over again? I, you know, don't even say to him, where were you all this time? Should have been paying attention. Too late now. No, no, no. وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ If even now one of the mushrikeen comes to you, give him time until he gets to hear the speech of Allah. And then don't hover over his face. So what's your decision? No, no, no. ثُمَّ أَبْلِغْهُ مَأْمَنَا Let him go to a safe place where he's not intimidated. Let him make his decision on his own. Subhanallah. Has this ever happened before? This is a special mercy given to Muhammad that was never given to any messenger before him. This is special. And then on top of this, in these four months, you have options. If you believe all previous crimes forgiven. I've been telling you, you're going to be overcome. I've been telling you, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ I've been telling you that, you know, لَتُغْلَبُنَّ You will be overcome. I've been warning you. And you didn't take it seriously. Now that it's happened, now you should believe. But even now, think about it. If you believe all the previous record is wiped, clean slate, full immunity. You're equal citizen. You're equal citizen. But if you don't want to believe, then I'm not putting you under house arrest either. You know what you can do? You can just move. You can move and no, you, you won't be killed. You can just leave. The punishment of the crimes you committed, you killed civilians, you kicked people out of their homes, you engaged in acts of aggression, and even then, even though you did all of these things, O Quraysh, you've got four months to either become Muslim and we forget, let bygones be bygones, or you can leave, and if you don't want to leave, then you better be ready to fight after four months. I don't know what else you call this but mercy. I don't know what else you call this. We have such a shallow reading of the seerah. Can you, when Allah says, Inna a'atainaka al-kawthar, rahmatan lil'alameen. Rahmatan lil'alameen. What nation was given this mercy? That they would be given an opportunity. This is an incredible gift of Allah Azza wa Jal. Another gift of Allah Azza wa Jal to the Messenger is the Qur'an. We say the Qur'an is the final miracle to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Was Musa Alaihi Wasallam given a miracle? 
Was Isa alayhi salam given a miracle? Was Salih alayhi salam given? They were given miracles too. So what's so great and abundant about the Qur'an? All of their miracles were only miracles while they were there. After they died, those things were no longer miracles, they were only stories that can be narrated. In other words, somebody who saw Musa alayhi salam turn the staff into a snake, can one day tell their child, you know what I saw with my own eyes? And then that child will say, you know what, my grand what your grandfather told me? And they can pass it down, but the first one saw a miracle, the rest of them heard what? A story. And a story isn't a miracle, it's a story. You can believe it and you can also what? Disbelieve it. But a miracle is something, it's in your face. The messengers is the only miracle, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that lives on and is as convincing as it was when it was revealed. The miracle lives on. The proof that the Qur'an is the word of Allah, the arguments of the Qur'an, the hujjah of the Qur'an is as valid today as it was then because, because all the other messengers were given miracles for the eyes to see. But this messenger predominantly, he was given a miracle for the ears.